This is CBS 2 News at 11. Right now at 11, a fire forces dozens of people from their homes in New Jersey. What's next for the families left homeless? The storm that was Hurricane Lee kills at least one person in Maine. We'll show you the areas left with a big mess to clean up. But first, police make an arrest in the suspected opioid death of a one-year-old boy at daycare. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jessica Moore. Tonight, we're hearing from that baby's grieving parents as three other children remain hospitalized, one in critical condition. CBS 2's Alicia Reed is live for us at the 52nd Precinct Station House in Norwood with the new developments. Alicia. Jessica, police sources confirm one person has been arrested. A second is still being questioned. Just yesterday, the families of four children got the devastating call that their babies had been rushed to the hospital for suspected opioid exposure. Little Nicholas Dominici would have celebrated his second birthday in November. His parents heartbroken after dropping the one year old off at Divino Nino, a home based daycare center on Friday. His mother telling us in Spanish he was so intelligent he would repeat everything you would say to him and that he had so much love. His family says he only started attending the daycare a week ago. They searched for the perfect location for their youngest son and thought they'd found it here. His father telling us the Kingsbridge Community Center recommended the daycare. He says that apartment was only supposed to be a daycare, but it was rumored to also have rented rooms. Officials say the daycare opened back in January and passed all inspections, including a surprise visit a week before the tragic incident. During Friday's investigation, police found equipment used to package large amounts of drugs. What it tells us is that the overdose crisis affects all of us, which is why it's an all-hands-on-deck public health moment. During Friday's emergency response, officials say an eight-month-old, a one-year-old, and two-year-old were under cardiac arrest and unresponsive, showing symptoms of opioid exposure. Police sources confirm Narcan was used to revive them. However, Nicholas didn't make it. And it is a real wake-up call for individuals who have opioids, or fentanyl in their homes. His father saying the hardest thing is for him to come home and open that door and not see Nicholas saying dad. Now, the medical examiner's office says that little Nicholas's cause of death is still pending again tonight. One person arrested, another is still being questioned. We did reach out to the daycare for comment. So far, we haven't heard back. Live from the 52nd Precinct, Alicia Reed, CBS 2 News. It's just unthinkable. Alicia, thank you. New tonight, a man is in custody accused of stabbing three people in the Bronx. Police say it started with an argument around 6 p.m. outside a building on Prospect Avenue in Charlotte Gardens. Investigators say the 26-year-old suspect stabbed a 45-year-old man in the head, a 29-year-old in the torso, and a 21-year-old in the hand. They are all in stable condition tonight. Now to our first alert weather and the storm that was Hurricane Lee made landfall in eastern Canada today after killing a man in Maine. The post-tropical cyclone caused damage in that state and in Massachusetts and brought rough surf to beaches in our area. The storm made landfall in Nova Scotia Saturday, packing winds of 70 miles an hour and knocking out power. Along coastal Maine, it toppled trees and crushed cars. I heard this like crash. I'm like, oh my God. Officials say the storm killed a 51 year old driver when a tree fell onto his car in Searsport. States of emergency are now in effect for both Maine and Massachusetts. When you're in the town, it's just like, yeah, you know, we got rain, but then come to the ocean, you can really see that like it's we got big waves and it's really intense. Umbrellas couldn't stand up to the powerful winds. How are those umbrellas working for you? Not really. <laughs> One man from New Jersey who wanted to visit Acadia National Park had his plans cut short. I came in from Jersey to uh, hike Arcadia. They shut it down. On the Jersey Shore, surfers were out taking advantage of the big waves Saturday morning. And at beaches across Long Island, the storm caused erosion and minor flooding. You could see it along the road, that they plowed the road and that they built up the dunes because it went through. We're still trying to rebuild the dunes from last season. 
because that's what keeps the dunes up is the seagrass and every time the the ocean breaks through it rips out the seagrass beaches on Long Island that closed to swimmers today are expected to reopen tomorrow. The weather tonight cool and comfortable, but changes are on the way for us as well. Meteorologist Vanessa Murdoch is here with our first alert forecast. Vanessa, they most certainly are and the first being that decrease in rip current risk as Lee pulls away. That's why the beaches can reopen tomorrow. The seas will be becoming much more calm as Lee moves in the northeasterly direction. Right now it is making its way over New Brunswick, still bringing very very powerful winds to the region. Sustained winds are at about 60 miles per hour. Thankfully, though, for us, it will keep on swiftly making its exit and things will calm down. But just some stats. Peak wind gusts, 93 miles per hour. Maximum rainfall in Maine, over five inches from this storm. But locally here at home, it is Man, a beautiful night, 68 degrees, clear and crisp out there. Temperatures are going to drop in dramatic fashion tonight because the skies are clear, the air is dry. This is optimal for chilliness. It's 44 overnight in Andover. It's 58 tonight where we bottom out in the city, 54 in Bridgeport and 55 out on the east end. As Jessica alluded to, the clear skies, well, that will be a change, and we've got more wet weather moving in for the start of your work week, but it actually arrives late tomorrow. So by full forecast, we will time out some showers that give way to steadier, heavier rainfall as you move into the work week. Jessica, back to you. All right, thank you, Vanessa. Dozens of people are out of their homes tonight after a fire in New Jersey this afternoon. It started inside a multifamily home on West Blackwell Street in Dover. Investigators say the fire caused extensive damage to the back of that building and then spread to an adjacent home. Some businesses on the first floor have smoke and water damage. The Red Cross says it is now assisting about 70 people. The cause of the fire is being investigated. Enforcement begins today for e-bike battery certification at all retail spots in the city. Any device using a lithium ion battery must now come with proof that it meets compliance standards. The Department of Consumer and Worker Protection is teaming up with the FDNY to share data for enforcement. The fire department hopes the new law will help cut down on fires. So far this year, lithium ion batteries have caused 175 fires and killed 14 people. A Bronx community came together today to remember a grandmother who was killed in a stray bullet shooting. A number of anti-violence organizations joined forces calling for peace while remembering 71-year-old Enriqueta Rivera. She was the unintended target of a shooting on East 138th Street Thursday. Her heartbroken daughter is now demanding justice. Beautiful woman. Her people, her people. Heal people, heal people. No. Come on the hill side. like this. Because people are here. On the street that she loves. Police continue to investigate a number of shootings in the Bronx this week that left eight people injured. Six of those victims were innocent bystanders. Police believe several of the shootings are connected and may be gang related. The United Auto Workers historic strike is now into its second day. The union continues to seek a new contract. CBS 2's Michael George reports on today's negotiations. On day two of the strike, auto workers are back on the picket lines, and both sides are back at the negotiating table. Nearly 13,000 workers walked off the job Friday, demanding higher pay, a shorter work week, and a return of pensions. There's some people here that are $17 an hour. I mean, I, even strike pay is probably almost equal to what they're bringing home. They're getting backup from politicians like Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman, who drove his Bronco to the Ford factory in Wayne, Michigan, to join the picket line. I always stand for the union way of life. The latest proposals from automakers Ford, GM, and Stellantis, the parent company of Jeep and Chrysler, are about half of what the union wants. Despite record profits and skyrocketing CEO salaries, GM CEO Mary Barra told CBS News Friday the company can't afford the union's demands. For the life of the contract, the initial demands were over $100 billion. Uh, we're, we still have a ways to go. The strikes have halted production at three plants, but the effects are far-reaching. Mark Zandi, chief economist at Moody's, says a prolonged strike could lead to more layoffs, higher auto prices, and less tax revenue coming in. The auto industry is the cornerstone of the nation's manufacturing base, which is key to economic growth. Michael George, CBS News, New York. 
The attorney general of Texas is now back in office after being acquitted in an impeachment trial. Ken Paxton was acquitted in the Texas Senate on all 16 articles of impeachment. Paxton was accused of using his position to help a real estate developer under federal investigation. Republicans slammed the investigation while Democrats maintained the charges were legit. Millions of taxpayer dollars have been wasted on this impeachment. The 60 Republicans in the Texas House of Representatives and two Republicans in this body saw the truth, just like we all have seen the truth at home. Following the acquittal, the state's lieutenant governor reinstated Paxton as Texas Attorney General. Still ahead at 11, new images show the moment police finally captured that escaped killer in Pennsylvania. What they say marked a big break in the case. And drivers caught by surprise after a hole opens up in the middle of a road in Chelsea. We'll tell you how it happened. And are you blowing your healthy diet with too many snacks? What a new study found and how timing plays a role. And here's Steve Overmeyer with a look at what he's working on for sports. Hey Jess, we're gonna tell you why Aaron Rodgers' return this season is actually more likely than we originally thought. And the Scarlet Knights have some offensive weapons. See how these young playmakers have kept Rutgers undefeated. That's later in sports.